It's Richard back at you guys. Friday morning, oh, can't, couldn't get here fast enough. We've been so busy, busy. We got Trent putting in a Dodge diesel. Hopefully it's gonna go today. Everything works out fine. We got Cody pulling, or excuse me, he's already pulled it out. He's putting the rear main seal in, uh, getting the vehicle ready for the transmission to go back in on the video that we're doing now. So we got a 96 uh, Chevy four wheel drive. Joe, is Joe from Amarillo, Teresa? There's Texas on the tag, so Texas is a big, big area, so it could be from anywhere. But we got a lot of things going on, guys. Got a six-speed, we got a Chrysler in the house, too, and a parking lot full. We got Teresa backing up, trying not to stumble. You're doing a good job, Teresa. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> we are busy, 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 busy. Got the instant clean machine warmed up. Guys, this has been a blessing in this guy. This has been one of the best things that's ever happened to us. Cleans our cases so clean that we, we just don't have any issues getting any trash out of them anymore. We got Annie hanging out. She's hanging out. Got a, oh, you want to check this out, guys. We've been building trophies for the next race coming up. This is a little girl we've been working on. Got it finished finally. Uh, we got a little uh, couple trophies here for the junior dragsters we're going to be giving away. These are pretty neat here, too. Uh, we got, we, we'll make uh, two of these like this. This here spins. Uh, this is uh, valves out of a motor, uh, played out of a 4L80E, I believe, or E40, I can't remember, E40D actually. Uh, push rod, stuff like that, pretty neat. Making some more over here too. Got some here we're building, gonna have some little eyes on him. Got some feet for, uh, small block Chevy rock arms for feet, stuff like that. We got a nose, gonna go on him for a nose. So we're going to get these done too. It's going to be pretty interesting to do. But can't be all play, guys. Work, work's got to come on too. So, But anyway, Joe's 96 Chevy four-wheel drive in the house. 4L60 early, early, early. I couldn't close the door, Teresa. The welder's in the way. There we go. Don't want that phone ringing 24-7, that's for sure. But guys, this is an early, early style non-removable bell housing. Doesn't look like it's ever been out of the vehicle. Really dark fluid. Uh, now they just bought this vehicle, I believe, Teresa. Is that right? Well, it's been a little while, but I mean, it hasn't been very long. Very long. You can tell the old fluid getting pretty broke down. And Probably been at the river a couple of times. Got a little bit of river mud, maybe a little bit of dirt road mud. A little bit of mud everywhere. Yeah. And he said when they purchased it, the fluid was blocking it. They serviced it out. So. Did they? Yeah. Try to make it work and last. Yeah. Let's see if we can get this out. Now we're going to beef this up for him because it is a younger gentleman driving it. Put all the good pieces back in here. But it's Friday morning. Actually really cool outside. I think it's it was 40-something this morning, Teresa? It's supposed to be a high of 58. High of 58 today, so that's going to be really nice As outside. you noticed, everybody's wearing pants. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, got, <laughs> it was hard to switch over, guys, because I tell you, it's hard to get into shorts, hard to get out of shorts. So, But anyway, like I said, this is just your factory servo here. Uh, we will put a Corvette servo in here and put a wide band in it, too, with your Z-Pack and stuff like that. You always want to check this capsule right down in here, guys. There's a capsule right here. Anytime you get your case out of the washer, you want to make sure this capsule is flowing and make sure that it's put some solvent in it, make sure it's sealing on the other end of it. Pretty simple. No, it really doesn't. But it's got some metal in it, guys. Look at that. Oh my gosh, look at that. It looks muddy. Did little. you say it worked? I don't know. You don't remember? No. This old fluid, this filter here, I mean, it's so stopped up, it's trying to suck it in the, into the body. I mean, you can see it's all collapsed in there. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's going to take some cleaning to get that clean. That's going to be an all day deal. Yeah, this pan gasket's really tightened down, way too tight, too smashed. 
Well, here we go. Let's see what this looks like, guys. Doesn't look like it's ever been apart. God, oh, looks like we got some paint on this pump right here, maybe. Looks like it's been painted. So that's a sign of probably been apart. Well, previous owner. Yeah. don't smell bad really at all does it right. you think it would Still smell worse smells. it does smell but it's not like just take your breath away stuff right. we have our PWM solenoid here you always change your oil rings on these if you ever, if you use your solenoids back they're in your overhaul kit we have our 3-2 downshift solenoid he's highly probably not because of all the metal oh all these solenoids got better place yeah this thing's there's so much metal in this thing that nothing will work properly when it comes to electronics. We have the early model of pressure control solenoid here. We have our shift solenoids. And we have our lockup solenoid. Yeah, I mean, we're still having issues with a uh, new solenoid failure. I mean, we had one come back the other day uh, with a, a TCC solenoid bad on a brand new harness. We had a Dodge come back the other day with the fluid in the connector, 3,000 miles. That's why we have these vehicles come back at 3,000 miles so we can physically go over every bit of them and see what's going on because we just don't trust things anymore. You know, brand new wiring harness and a Dodge diesel, we, we bring it in for a 3,000 mile service. We check the connector for fluid, full of fluid in the connector. Brand new, what do you do? Put another one on it, you know, so, you know, they do warranty them, but still, you know, it, it's just a work. Well, that's why. Uh... That's why we recommend that 3,000 mile service because mm -hmm. if something's going to happen, it's going to happen within that 3,000 mile service. Yes. Yeah. And we've seen it. Right. And then we can address it at the time mm -hmm. and then it doesn't destroy everything. In the tranny, yep. Yeah. Starting to come alive a little bit, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> kind of weird. You don't smell them that bad, but then next thing you know, it's kind of go. Well, yeah, my ears like... just popped and my sinus is freed up, so now I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you can see here our pillow switch. It's just full of metal. They put these covers on here to keep metal from getting down into this circuitry and stuff like that on the later versions. This could be a newer style. It, it you know. Been this early, normally it wouldn't have that cover on there. So. One of those, there will be no air checking. No. Now we're going to get in here and look at our lockup valve, see if anything's been done here. It has been blocked. So, see there, guys? Somebody did something. Well, the shift kit don't tell you to do that, so. Now your one-two shift valve right here too, your accumulator valve, it's stuck solid, it don't move at all. So you gotta remember your accumulator system is a two-stage on this. It's got this valve here, and then it's got this accumulator here. So both that has to stroke to make this work. So if that valve's uh, messed, uh, stuck, then you're gonna have a hard shift whether this is on there or not. Now the shift kit we got over here, we have a transgo kit, we're going in this. Um, Get all the check balls that fell out of here. Now you can see here our plate has a little bit of damage here around the check ball hole there. Now this can be fixed. Now if all of them are damaged then it's not worth fixing the plate, just get another one. But you can also see here uh, we do have a round hole, round hole, round hole, round hole gasket. So the gaskets seem to be right. We have V for valve body. You always want to look on both sides on your gaskets because uh, I talked to a gentleman the other day. He accidentally put a round hole here, square hole on the other side, and it, it train didn't work right. 
So you always want to make sure you put the right ones. And then it'll say K, C, and V for valve body. That way you know you put the right ones on the right sides. You can see here where we got the metal coming from right here. You can see it's hanging out right there already, trying to fall out. So there's going to be a lot of damage down inside. Hopefully we can get it apart. That's the main thing. Cause if we can't get it apart, then we got to find a core. And we go to great lengths to get these things apart. Uh, to save the case and whatever internals that we can save. Now, of course, uh, we're going to be putting all new aluminum uh, accumulator pistons in it. Uh, I haven't went and got them out of the drawer yet, but now the ones we use have a longer shank here on them that supports the piston better when it slides up and down in the bore. And we have our overdrive servo here, or excuse me, accumulator here. Now we will block this one. We'll stack two pistons on it and get rid of that. That way it's not usable anymore. There's no fluid in the connector, but you know you can put a brand new one on it and get fluid in the connector the next day. So Two tap pump washer. They never changed that style up or anything from 700s to 4L60s. They've always been the same. This is what I hope I want it to be really good because these pumps are getting pretty tough to find. Feels really good. You got this shadow look here. Nothing there though, just a shadow. Same way here. It's got a dual spring slide spring. I say somebody's been into this before, definitely. So all this will be replaced. We put a complete kit in here. And then with your your pump slide pin, you definitely want to look at it and make sure it's not wore out. You can start, it's wore out right there, you can see it. Mm -hmm. This is what keeps this aligned up and makes sure it stays, uh, pivots flat instead of crooked. So we we'll look at that. Then you have your pump slide pin spring. Of course we have a bushing here. Seal retainer, you can pull right off with your finger. So you always want to uh, 3M these on there. Uh, then I 3M my seal in there too. That way this cannot come off. Put a new pump bushing in there. Pump looks really nice. I'm really excited about that. And we'll get our band anchor here loose. our anchor just a stock band which it's totally cooked now sometimes on these early ones like this you got to be careful you can run into a small hole drum right here see that feed hole is square some of them are round and the size of pencil lead you gotta be careful of course this drums uh, pretty much no good it's belt bowed in the middle Right there. You gonna do the light test? Yeah, let's see if we can see how bad it is. See how bad that is, guys? Mm -hmm. 
I mean, it's more through here than there, and then it gets touching. See, and then it doesn't even touch there at all, see? Mm -hmm. So, you want to check your drums. Even if the drum looks good, check it in three spots all the way around. And then if it's good, 180 grit this really good. Put some new bushings in here. I had a guy talking the other day, or I, I was watching a discussion with some gentlemen on the, on the internet about how this wave, or this bevel plate cuts his drum right here. If he turned it over, uh, would, it, would it quit doing it? Probably won't. I mean, I've, you're pushing on the plate to here and then applying the clutches towards the outer, how it applies. You know, so it starts in the center and works its way out. If you do it this way, it's going to start from the outer edge and work its way in. And I'm not sure, you know, I, I don't see it helping because you can set this down in here, kind of wiggle it around. See how it moves around a lot that way? Let's turn it over and see how much it moves around. Stops a little bit of it. But that isn't the way it goes in there, unfortunately. And uh, if it, you do it that way, it, it, it applies more on the outer edge of this piston right here. If you look, the bevel is actually hanging over the piston. Then it has to come over and flatten against that hole and seal it off like a check ball. See? This way here, they got it on the outer edge and going down. You can see how it applies with the pressure point on the piston. So, you can kind of see it the same way in the clutch, how it applies on the inner and works its way out, how it's dark. See? And so it's been, I mean, this, this train's been through some abuse. It, it's not normal driving, standard driving wear on this thing. But what do you expect for a, a blazer around Amarillo, huh, Teresa? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we got a river out here, guys, that a lot of people go to every weekend. <coughs> we used to. Yep. And you want to check this bearing here for any type of wear. Like I say you have a parking uh, or a wine and park in neutral if you have a bad bearing there. Feels like he's got the load springs still in here. Of our load spring. We just got a stock six clutch, three, four clutch pack, and then we have our load springs. You can tell they're starting to get a little bit low into the housing here. They usually stick out a little bit farther. Just check them with a new one uh, and match them up, see how, how much wear, because just by looking at it, it's really hard to tell. We have our engine brake clutch. You don't ever see usually any wear on this unless they're manually shifting it. Putting it in drive reverse, drive reverse possibly, you know, fast. So clutches are almost look factory. They don't even look like they're an aftermarket style clutch. Make sure they got it stacked right. Yeah, they had that clutch against the steel and then the steel against the wave. Just making sure real quick. Of course, we have an aftermarket sprag in here. It's been replaced. Of course, it's a single cage sprag. Steel uh, supports for it, though. If you get in here and look here, though, I you can see a lot of wear in here. This inner race is just wore plumb out. And of course the outer one, you can tell it hadn't even been spinning in here. It's been locked in one position. And then the inner's been spinning only. Where they should really be spinning in both areas. So, 
once they get a lot of trash in them like that, then they'll just stop. Think there's going to be any carnage down in here, Teresa? I don't know. I'm ready to see where the metal came from. That was a lot of metal in there. That is a lot of metal. Something's going on. Yeah. I didn't look at that thing out. Where'd it go? There we go. Messed up through there. Oh, yeah, you, that didn't even fall off. The bushing. Uh, that's uh, actually the bushing down in here. The, the bearing is probably messed up in the planetary down in here. Oh, oh that's. But you can see here where that bushing does run. It's wore out here. Mm -hmm. Thrush washer style. Now we'll update this to a roller bearing style. We'll leave the four pinion planets in it. We're not going to update the planets to five pins or anything like that. But we'll get this lower planetary out of here and look and see what we got. Because I believe this here is where all the major, major damage is. Of course, we got our anti clunk spring last. You can see all the the metal down in here for sure. And just see the chunks in between the gears mm -hmm. where it run it over. What happened is this little bearing right down in here went bad. And with this, you can see this is part of the bearing right there. So it's down in there. Uh, if you look at this other planet, here's the bearing. There's the non-bearing. It just grinded it off. I've seen the, them drive them. On the 700s and stuff, you make this type of metal, it's done. It, it quits shifting instantly. But being these computer-controlled style, uh, they'll go and go and go until the filter stops up. So I've seen these come in here where this piece is cut completely out right here. It's broke plumb off right here. Where this gear has physically grinded all the way through and come off and cut this out right through here. Yeah. So... Which we replace all the sun gears anyway, that part doesn't matter. Planets, we got planets everywhere. Look at our low reverse clutch. It does have a wave in here. Now we'll be getting rid of the wave because I, I can tell by the way the vehicle is used before they manually shifted it. This gentleman, maybe not. But we're going to protect ourselves and, and take this wave out. That way we know it has a lot better reverse and a quicker release when it shifts a second in manual. New race there, new planet. Come in here and look at our Sprague assembly. You want to look in here for any chattering on this race here too? We're just run over so much metal that all this stuff here is pretty much no good. The Sprague rollers, you can see, they just got grind marks all through them. Now the housing's good with the clutch runs. We take this apart, put a new Sprague assembly in there, new uh, inner race and everything like that, and it'll be good. So, well, I thought I was we're jumping into an all original unit, guys, and ended up jumping into a swamp. <laughs> Pretty crazy. But it's going to take everything we got in the house to put this thing back together, but we have it all in the house. Teresa, I want to thank you again for recording. Definitely. Annie, can we get a shout out? Annie, what are you doing over there, girl? There you go. That's a good wink, wasn't it? Yeah. Hey, y'all don't forget to subscribe. Uh, it's Friday. Let's go have a good weekend. Y'all have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. Have a great day.